That's very nice. nice. Sweet. Like that's pretty thick. Yeah, we might want to go on the thicker side though, since that's the open pore surface. That's crazy. That's new. Oh, that looks good. If people did like a double cup, you could like start the body and follow up with the tail. I seen a mold. It was like two years ago. It was big. It was a musky berry, and it was open pour, and then the tail was a big rib, uh, curly tail, and it went up. So he would pour the body, but obviously not the tail because it's up. At a certain point, he would like one hand the injector and inject, and it would fill the tail down to the body and make a like, fire tail bonded right to an open pour. Wow. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is he? Oh my god. Alright, so let's split this baby in half and see what our halves look like. That's probably a good stopping point. Yeah. Because the bait's designed, the mold is designed. Now I have to sit here literally and put like... Okay, so this machine's warming up. That'll be a few minutes. We got our metal ready. Let me go get the program and my USB. So we've had what, like nine hours into programming or something? Probably. Yeah. Nine hours. It's crazy. A lot of processes. Yeah, but it's coming together. We'll do one final run through here just to see on the big computer what it looks like and then we'll cut it. So that's like the first roughing of the cavity. And then we added this next step right there, second roughing. Looks good. Yeah, those are scales. Yep. The burring. Oh, I see one thing I missed. Uh oh. Oh, there's always one thing. <laughs> okay, so. Nine more I, hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Our holes. Our, our pinholes. Oh, the pinholes. We forgot our pinhole. Tool goes down at like a spiral. Machines those. Where like the pins come out of our mold. Yeah. Not half. There's like a little ring around there. And I do that so that's a visual cue. Well, it's visual cue mainly so you know like where the pins go rapidly. And so that if there's ever like debris or like if I'm pressing a pin in and it kind of bubbles this like surface somehow, mm -hmm. like dents it a little bit, it's down in that little 10 thou recess instead of like bringing it above the surface and then the mold doesn't close. Okay. So that's kind of the theory behind that. Like a little crusty trap. A little crust trap. Nice. Is it pretty settled in there? Yep. <laughs> needs a lot of shaking. Do you? I have a thing on my drill now that I mix this, this with and submerge I, it. And brrr. You know what's funny though? What? I have like a five foot long one that would go in there. <laughs> Just gotta mix the plastic. Oh, I went everywhere. <laughs> okay, mullets are black and white. That's about it, right? A little bit of blue. Maybe a little bit of shine in there. Probably monkey milk. Black and white and monkey milk stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. That is some subtle monkey milk. Look at the dust on this. It'll burn. You think I've been making a lot of open pores? <laughs> Dusty hot plates and settled colorants. <laughs> Here we go. It's not right. We ran the wrong operation. Don't run out too first. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's nice and shiny, but it's now it's too thin, so yeah. Scrap bait. <laughs> A lot of molds in there. Scraps. What is that? Spiffy kick tail mold? Scrap. Something's wrong with it. <laughs> Had a scratch. I meant to say slouch tail mold. Cutting a new one. Hey, let's see if it's right this time. Op one. One. Oh no. What? 
<laughs> I was tired when I programmed this. Another issue. Hold on. Another issue. Let me turn to saw. What it was a late night. We haven't had much sleep. <laughs> See, I accidentally programmed my origin from the center of the part here. Oh, it needs to be on a corner somewhere. Yes, it needs to be down here. So now, just gotta regenerate all tool paths. Hope it doesn't crash. Okay, now we're good to go. It's gonna tap next. Tap the hole for the bolt. This is rough in the cavity. Yes, this is it. You going? Oh yeah. Okay. I'm gonna put that awkwardness in the video too. You wanna see it now or when it's split? Just a little bit. Okay. Oh That's good. That looks like <laughs> it's more. like so. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We know off two kind of works because we already ran it. Wow. No. I'm confident in that size for the plastic to run through now. You think? Yeah. I think it'll go through there. Can you kind of see that? Right. I'm confident. Good. I like it. She's going to do the honors. Put the bolt in. Uh, let me actually put it together and rub it on the um, scotch Bright. We do like almost every mold. Really? Clean it up. Make sure it looks really good. Look at that. Here you go. Time to pour. Man, I hope that works. I'm going to do a one color remelt to start. This is very new. As far as I know, there's nothing like this. It's an open pour, but the cavity goes, sinks down under the surface, giving the bait much more dimension, much more shape than just having a completely flat open pour surface. And it's a belly pour. So you pour the top color first and then the belly color and whatever between. First thing to try is to not have a hot mold. I'm just going to see if with a cold mold, the plastic will come up to the tail and the whole thing fills. I have a feeling it won't. This might be a mold that you have to have on a hot plate to pour. So let's see. Yeah, you need a hot plate. I didn't feel like waiting, but it did fill in pretty good. Both of those fins just filled in easy peasy. The tail filled in. Oh, it's got a good shape to it. The paddles curved in two directions, goes down and back and then back down. Okay. It was close. I'm gonna pour again right away. The epic mullet. Let's see how it does this time. The, the mold's a little bit warmer from the plastic we already poured. I'm gonna pour faster this time. I just over poured. Got a little antsy there, over poured again. Now I'm gonna dump it out and just check. I don't need a functional bait from this. I just wanna see if it's filling. All right. I poured those two top fins fast and they filled in just fine. So I have a lot of confidence in those things. Okay, everything is filling in. Dude, that looks like a mullet. We're gonna get this on the hot plate. We're gonna get it hot and then we're gonna pour it and it's gonna turn out perfect because it's so close already. Okay, the mold is not cold. It's not like super hot either. I just wanna see if I can with a not super hot mold. You just gotta creep up on it, you know? Yeah, it's coming up way higher back here. Let's finish it off. I'm over pouring, but I just feel the need to just get that plastic in there. That'll be a finished usable bait. Let's get that off of there. Oh, it's good. No cold cracking, completely filled out. Horrible color choice, but we just needed to know that it works and it does. Peel off my sloppy flashing. 
That is like so molety. It needs to cure. It's still hot. I'm impatient right now. The paddle goes up instead of down. It's got the recurve to it. It's gonna kick like a psycho. That is the 3.9 epic mullet. Cast over you? Sure. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of tail. See that? Ooh. That looks good. The tail's got a lot of like natural, like subtle movement. Yeah, I think it's good. Sweet. I think too, because the tail's not, it just has a side to side wobble. I think in currents and stuff, it'll still form all right. Right. Okay, I have mullet like colors ready to go black, bluish black pearly stuff and monkey milk white. Let's just pour something pretty. All right, we poured that black, let it sit a bit. That made it to the back. Last is some monkey milk. That plastic is back there. It went all the way through. Monkey milk's the last color. Let's see if that goes all the way through. This is the hottest mold yet. Pour the tail a little. One last little drop back here. Maybe three. Okay. Jason's making more molds so I can make more of these at once. These take a while to make because of the open pourness and the hot plate and the cooling down. As many of you already understand, but flick some wing nuts. Just one on this mold. Complete guess of what would look good. Not experienced with this mold whatsoever, and that looks good. Wow, okay. Oop. It's like, it's actually easier to show you guys this stuff when it's in the mold still, but whatever. This is a fantastic proof. Let me get some of this crusty overspill because of my messy pouring out of here. Fantastic proof of pour ability. You see how it's two different colors in the middle of that fin, and it came together fantastically still no cold cracking so even though you do need to come back to this tail fin after you fill in the body a bit and pour that hole it has not given me any troubles whatsoever to do that so far all of them are looking flawless this is good this is very good it's got a nice dark top i want to try to pour the tail a specific color darken it up or chartreuse it up or something and keep the body pretty similar to that that'll probably be the plan for the next one Look at those lines. Especially when it's translucent, those lines go through. Putting the mullet vibe off. Gosh, they're so clean. Once in a while, I think those mullet lines that we intentionally put into the mold is, is cold cracking, but then I, then I remember. This is cool. I tried to do a thing where that top dark color meets and it did like there's a centimeter or less, half a centimeter right there of where it didn't meet, but it's still filled in. In the gap that goes under the surface, no cold cracking, it's still filled in right there because the venting's so good. That's impressive. You can't screw this mold up. Wow. This one's the same. They didn't quite meet, but it's still filled in. Oh my goodness. And those skinny things on the top are always filling in because of the venting. So nice. Whew. Hot. Oh, that is so beautiful. Kept the mold extra hot to blend a little bit and make those colors fade into each other. Goes from super turbo pink to tequila sunrise in the front with a white belly all the way through. That's the prettiest one yet, for sure. That's an appreciable bait. Look at that, Jason. Dude, that's insane. This is another one of the same, less pink. The pink's just on the tail back there now. Stunning. This one's more plain. Tequila sunrise with white. And I tilted the mold a little bit to look down that hole while I was pouring and then it did that. So ignore that please, I was, that's my fault. 
Yummy. Okay, barely cold enough to handle, but you can take them out, so they're, they're coming out. You guys see the sunburn on my hands I got from fishing with the sun shirt on? <laughs> so much in Florida here. Pretty intense. Whoa. The pogies around here have a little bit of goldish yellowness on the tail. That's sparkly. That tequila sunrise color, I'm really liking right now, so I keep using it. But a little bit of gold running through that entire lateral line. That is a good one. On this one, I poured a little bit more of the Tequila Sunrise. It went all the way through the tail, pulled up down there, and still bonded perfectly to that gold. That looks kind of cool. Just seamless. Wow. I will be fishing confidently. just in case they need some gold sparkle. Lovely. Woo, these are the hottest. Ouch. Ha, that might be my favorite. Even though it doesn't have something super crazy and flashy on it. That's a satisfying one. I put a uh, a drop of black in with that tequila sunrise, it turned it all very purple. Gold flash, white belly, white tail. Mm. It's impressive because it's the opposite of what everything Yeah, that's a good color. That'll do just fine. That's a sleek, slim, unique little bait. A little bit of worm oil. Lay it flat. Hopefully they all orient themselves nicely so the tails aren't bent up. Who knows what we'll catch? Absolutely perfect fit. I couldn't even tell you what the name of this jig had, I don't know, but yeah. Okay, I was a bit off, <laughs> but still, yummy. It's like an all-natural clown mullet. Let's see what bites. Might have to get my feet wet. I'm not shy. I'll get my feet wet. There you go. Yeah. That was a good risk. Come on. Sit, he's staying down like a walleye. That is. Yeah. Good one. They exist. Oh no. Whoa. You got him. You got him. That was a costly fish. It broke my rod. What the heck? But it's official. Walleye, like the new epic mullet. That's definitely a keeper, but I'm not keeping fish right now. Be free. <laughs> I keep biting for you. Yep. I had this rod for two years. I loved it. That's kind of sad. It just blew out right there. I don't know. It's like a month later. I've been pouring and fish, fishing and testing, fishing. Coming up with different color schemes. Just being relentless with this bait. Plenty of fish have been caught by now, you'll see. This is a good bait. Just spiffy as heck. You might notice, totally poured these upside down. That's one thing to remember with this mold. If you're not used to open belly pour, and you got a stack of molds that you're pouring this bait along with, this one wants its colors in the opposite order. <laughs> Chip, stop bumping the camera, please. We got some spicy mullets. If you guys could smell that right now, your nose would be burning with garlic. That right there is the same mullet that I caught the uh, walleye on. The all-natural shirtless walleye catch. You're welcome, fellas. See how they're nibbling. 
as you can see, got my other spinner out, spinning rod. It's just not the same as my Stargate, but we'll make do. We're at one of the best ponds that I'm allowed to fish at. Probably the best pond that I'm allowed to fish at occasionally. I love this place. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 there it is. We had to make it official with a bass. That's a necessity in my videos. Let's not break this rod. Good old bass. It's official. Like the new mullet bait from Epic Bait Molds. Be free. It's official. Nick's here. I got a mold for you. <laughs> hey. Good. How you doing? It's an extra mullet. Look at that. It goes under. Comes back up. What's that? A bass. More official. Doesn't hurt to ever make it more official. Bass like the new epic mullet. By the drain. Skip, 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 skip. Whoop. I don't know if that makes it less official or more, but we got a dink. Be free. They're all by that drain. Try to chuck it in there and pull it back. I bet you'll get one. On the doobie. Nice. Hooked <laughs> up on the doobie. You get a five pounder. <laughs> on the doobie. That's like the, the most perfect thing to say when you catch a fish on a doobie. On the doobie! I'm kind of excited for the frog pond now. What's that? Please be a crappie. Uh, another green one. All on my favorite color that we poured too. Stunning. That bait's got like five fish now. I think five, it was four or five. Be free. Straight to the surface, it's a bass. Again, official, chewed up my bait. That one lasted quite a few fish. I could probably still use it, but why not go with the garlicky ones? Smells like it should be a potato chip flavor. Oh, dude, that is totally crappy. Soft little bites. That was a fish on the fall. Does that mean it's a crappie? Is it? No, it's not. This one likes garlic though. That's pretty sweet. We got a swim bait hook on. It kind of molds around that fin right there. Recess the hook point into the body. Perfect. I don't even know what kind of hook this is. It's a Japanese one, but that's just incredibly good. Gonna have to be careful though. Might not want to set hooks like a Bassmaster on a 10 pound braid and spinning rod set up. Nice. On the swim bait hook with a spinning rod. I'm glad I got one like that. Makes it feel like summer. <laughs> Another one.
you are better than the last. That's for sure. The epic mullet has become quite official with the largies, and it goes really good on that little swim bait hook. There's one from the depths. Ooh, it took a little drag. Is this the biggest one yet? Yep. Maybe a two pounder. There's some good size on the epic mullet. It's official. Nice bass. Be free. Got me right in the crotch. One out of every pond, man. They're nice and chunky out of this back pond. Good bass right there. Catching them on a swim bait hook, on a gorgeous one at that. Fantastic. This is June Bug with some Green Smoke Pearl. Remelt, and I'm gonna up the Green Smoke Pearl just a bit. Add a squirt. And it's translucent. Very translucent. Whoops. Stuff that down into the bottom, okay. There's a full cup. That's the top color. I got some aggros over here I want to pour. Next. Iridescent fire orange. Just up front here, not even going to the tail. Gave the aggros quite a bit more. Start on the last color here. Gold earthworm. It's a strange color. It's like an earthy gold. Reminds me of a mixture of that bone color, like bone white and gold. And then like lower the exposure on that a couple notches because it's darker. Dark bony gold. I'm gonna fill up the bellies with this. Whoa, I got some wind coming through the window there. Not cool. Just added some used motor oil to that gold color. It's gonna be the darker tops on the aggros. Whoa, a clump just fell out, dang it. Whoa, not cool. At least doing that's a thing. I fixed it. These are gonna be lovely. Demold time. Dude, that. All right, precisely what I was going for. Let's take it out. That extra translucent purple top allows some of that fire orange to shine through. Accented the front for a strike zone. The hook point's gonna be like up here, you know? So just like a bite right here symbol for the fish, you know? It's supposed to be how that works, I think. That is beautiful. This is the one where I made that mistake initially and kind of poured down the side of the bait with the purple. I'm looking for any differences due to the, I don't really see anything. Maybe a little bit right there. No, that's clean stuff, man. Classy, bright, clean colors right there. Twill catch. How about the aggros? Whoa, that's a color. That's a good one. I respect that color. It's like a dark, it's not black, but it's getting there. Pearly gold and purple with a beautiful fire orange accent. That is gorgeous. That's one of my favorite aggro colors I ever poured right there. The fire orange comes out so prominently. Let's do that again. St 
stunning. What more could you ask for? It has rained recently, but this river is still clear. Beautiful. Let's just start clobbering them. Got one! New species on the mullet. It's official. Small mouth, like the 3.9 inch epic mullet. Wow, he really just did a number on this bait. Third species. Boy, a pike would just make my life right now. Four species on the mullet. Fish on. It is hours later. We had to come all the way up to the, the dam. Ooh. And almost didn't even get to say that it's official. But once again, it's official. Smallmouth, like the new epic mullet. Be free. They are slow today. Oh my goodness. Oh man, new species. Look at that. Oop. <laughs> it's official. Rock bass. Like the 3.9. So how long is this fish? Four. Somewhere around seven or eight inch rock bass. Like the 3.9 inch. Epic mullet, be free. Fourth species, incredible. I don't catch those very often. That would have made great bait. Super hardy bait right there. Got a two small mouth and a rock bass. Did you really? Yeah, not that good today, but. It's got a ton of horizontal flutter. It's got a great tail for hitting the bottom and then coming up off of it. It seems like when you come up off the bottom with this tail, it, the recurve in it just grabs the water strangely, just gets it going real hard. It's got a consistent, just straight retrieve reel, stable head, wide swinging tail in the back. It's got that going on, of course, but it's something special when you pull it up off the bottom and jig it. It's like as it's doing this motion off the bottom, water's catching the recurve on that tail differently throughout the motion, and it looks really struggly. That's the best way I can describe it. That is a delectable looking one right there. I'm here for a photo op, just opportunities to take photos of this bait. But fishing here sounds nice too. I know you're not supposed to put your baits on the eyelets. I only do that for pictures and people to comment that you're not supposed to do that. Time to catch a muskie. Dude. That was a hit right off the bat and I didn't set the hook. What is the matter with me? I got some fish flesh. Fish on! What do we got? What do we got? A good old smallie. You know, I don't want to say he choked it because that is such a YouTuber thing to say. But... I feel like the hook point was covered by that tail and he choked it. I don't say that in a trendy manner. He choked it and the hook point never got into him. I don't see any red mark or blood or anything in there. This fish actually choked it and was caught by a choke. That's pretty cool. I think that's the only appropriate way to say that a fish choked it. Okay, let's see if they want a moving bait. This is my last attempt with the mullet to catch stuff. There's one. I think it's just a bass. But at least we got something out of a lake with the mullet. Lake bass, it's official. Be free. I think everybody on the lake heard me yell, there's one.
kind of embarrassed right now. Demanding everyone to drop their weapons while the three of them don't know what will happen next. With Nick, subscribe, and I'll catch y'all on the first time. Lots of unique stuff about this mold. In conclusion, I recommend. It's a good one. Fun to pour. Fun to demold because you get to see if your idea worked. If the layers met up how you wanted down below the surface. Made for a jig head. Goes great on the fancy flat backed types of jigs too. Because it's got a flat front right there. Meshes up nicely. I was fishing them a ton on the ball heads. Because it meshes up nicely on those as well. Kind of like seats against that flatness. It looks good on anything. That's what I'm trying to say. Caught it all from a freaking 20 inch walleye to a little seven inch rock bass, 3.9 inch bait. They were just going after this thing. I got a soft spot for the smaller open pour stuff. The stuff that you can pour on a hot plate with just Pyrex cups, you don't need an injector. Kind of sized stuff though that you can have a ton of confidence in while you fish. Very useful, practical. Tons of opportunity to make it look beautiful. Satisfy your artistic side with a partially subsurfaced open pour, open belly pour mullet mold. Epicbaitmolds.com. Link below if you want one. They're available. Thank you, Jason and Amanda. I fished once in Florida with that thing off of a pier. I guess it wasn't my day, didn't catch anything that day. That's fine, I came back here and destroyed them. Came back to my territory that I know better. I'll have to go back down. There's rumors of a, uh, I shouldn't even say this, but there's rumors of a six inch version in the works, possibly. Just in, in the minds of people who work on this. But me and Jason are thinking about doing a six inch. And... Thanks for watching. Go pick up a mullet. Go get into soft plastic pouring and pick up a mullet. Do it. It's fun. It's satisfying. It makes catching fish better. If you made the bait that the fish bit, that's how that works. Go do it, you won't regret it. On to the next bait.